Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Connect with Network Health virtual engagement event. We are so glad that you are here with us today. I'm Kelly Vandervillen, the Community Engagement Coordinator here at Network Health, and I will be your host for today. We're really looking forward to spending time with you and appreciate you joining us for this virtual engagement and educational event. I'd like to give a big warm welcome to our Network Health members, to my Network Health colleagues who are here with us today, and those of you joining us near and far. Our Connect with Network Health events give us a wonderful opportunity to live our mission here at Network Health, which is to create healthy and strong Wisconsin communities. I'm so happy to see the sun shining from my home office window today, and I hope the same for you. We sure have had a couple of really nice days here in Wisconsin, which has been great to enjoy. Um, but we all know with the changing season and weather here in Wisconsin, some of us also need to stock up on that Kleenex, maybe some Claritin and extra eye drops because allergy season is definitely upon us. So I'm looking forward to introducing you to our special guest in just a few minutes, um, who's gonna talk with you about allergy season, what to expect and how to best prepare, and also feel good this spring and summer. But before I do that, I just wanna give you a little sneak peek at what you can expect from today's presentation. So first, I'll just share some brief information with you about Network Health, and then next, I will introduce you to our special guest, Sarah, from our pharmacy team, who will present the information on seasonal allergies and the best ways to treat them. So before we begin, I just wanna let you guys know that today's event gives us here at Network Health the opportunity to connect with all of you and support one another along our health and wellness journey. Whether in a virtual room like we are today or at an in-person event, our connection with our community is important. For nearly four decades, Network Health has established strong roots in our local Wisconsin, Wisconsin communities by putting our members first. We are co-owned by two high quality health systems, Freighter Health and also Ascension Wisconsin. And at Network Health, we take the extra steps to make health insurance affordable and also understandable so that our members can make the most of their coverage. Network Health improves the lives of local business owners, individuals and families as we pursue our mission to create healthy and strong Wisconsin communities. And our employees, some of whom you'll meet today, demonstrate their dedication and passion to helping others improve their life health and wellness by getting involved with organizations that serve our communities. We put in the extra effort because we want to and not because we have to. We know that you are our family, friends, and neighbors. So we're side by side with you and our Wisconsin communities. Again, thank you so much for joining us today and for choosing to spend time with us here at Network Health today. All right, so now I'm really excited to introduce you to my Network Health colleague, Sarah Wilczek. Sarah is a clinical pharmacist here at Network Health. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here today. Awesome, thanks for having me, Kelly. Yes, absolutely. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Sarah. Sounds good. All right, good morning. Um, like Kelly said, I'm a, one of the pharmacists here at Network Health, located in Menasha. I'm here to talk to you today about seasonal allergies which are also known as hay fever, um, symptoms that occur during specific times of the year, and they can be based on seasons. It's usually when plants release pollen or mold release spores, can be affected by the weather. Right now we are in full blown allergy season, but I guess the one benefit of our cold spring was it was delayed a few weeks. So first we have to talk a little bit about allergies versus COVID-19. This is an ever changing slide because um, there is a lot of overlap between the allergy symptoms and COVID symptoms. Typically allergies have more itchy, watery eyes, rapid sneezing, not so much the fever, chills, muscle aches, nausea, vomiting diarrhea, the things that are associated with COVID-19. However, there is a significant amount of overlap between allergies and COVID-19, such as cough, fatigue, headache, sore throat, congestion, or runny nose. This slide is an ever-changing slide with new variants. Uh, so it, it doesn't hurt if you're unsure if it's allergies or COVID to take a test so you're not exposing others. All right, before we get into the medications and ways to treat allergies, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to prevent allergies. Um, one of the great ways is to keep windows and doors shut in your car and home. 
uh, change your clothes and take a shower after working or playing outdoors. So that way you're not bringing that pollen in with you. Don't hang your clothes out to dry because they can just collect pollen and other allergies and kind of time your day based on pollen counts. So tree and grass pollen is highest in the evening during spring and summer. Ragweed pollen is highest during the morning during late summer and fall. So you can kind of time your outdoor time if these are your trigger allergens, things that trigger your allergy symptoms. You can work around the weather. Um, so you want to probably stay inside on dry, windy days as allergies can really be flared then. And you can venture outside right after it rains. The rain did us a favor and washed away the pollen temporarily. So after we've tried the symptom prevention, there are, we do have some really great tools to help us treat allergies. The first ones I'm gonna talk about are the oral allergy medications. These are probably the things that you're most familiar of. Um, basically things, we, they're broken down into different classes of antihistamines. We have the first generation antihistamines, such as Benadryl, Chlortrimeton. These typically cause drowsiness. Benadryl is actually the active ingredient in Tylenol PM. So the downside to these is that they can put you to sleep. They do work typically very fast, so if you need rapid relief, and they're only good in ages six and up. Um, where in adults it causes drowsiness, kids it can actually cause the alternate reaction where they get really excitable. And with that, the thing too about these first generation antihistamines like the Benadryl or the Chlortrimeton is that they can have more side effects that are drying, such as drowsiness, which recovered, constipation, difficulty urinating, and dry mouth. These side effects tend to get worse the older we are. So it's best unless you absolutely need it to try to avoid the first generation antihistamines for routine allergy treatment. Luckily, we have the second generation antihistamines. Um, they're definitely safer for continuous treatment of allergies. We have Claritin, which is loratadine, Allegra fexofenadine, and Zyrtex or tyrosine. As a whole, these cause much less drowsiness than the first generation antihistamines. The exception can be Zyrtec or its generic sertirazine, which can definitely cause drowsiness in up to about 10% of the people. So with that one, if you're one of those 10%, just take the medication at night. These do have different age limits, but Zyrtec can be used in ages two and up. These tend to be less drying. Um, personally, as a pharmacist, I tend to always recommend generic Claritin or generic Zyrtec, purely for the reason that Allegra has some odd drug interactions, mainly, the, mainly that grapefruit, orange, and apple juice can decrease the effectiveness of the Allegra. Always buy the generic product. There's no reason to spend money on the brand. Your local pharmacist can help you find it too on the shelf. To, because these are over-the-counter treatments, these are not covered under Medicare or commercial insurance, but they're very affordable. They tend to be $10 or less for a month's supply at a local pharmacy. Again, your local pharmacist can help you find the one that you want on the shelf. Sometimes people switch antihistamines up a little bit. One year Claritin works great for them or the Loratadine. The next, next year, it might not be cutting it. So give Zyrtec or Sertirazine, it's generic a try. Um, one year, it might work better than the other. And then we have another tool in our toolbox for allergies. These are our internasal corticosteroids. They are great for nasal congestion because they're absorbed in the sinus cavity exactly where they are needed. For persistent allergy symptoms, especially the nasal congestion, these intranasal corticosteroids are the best option. They come, they used to all be over the, excuse me, they used to all be prescription, but now they are available over the counter without a prescription. Again, definitely buy the generic here. It's going to work the same as the brand and save you money. With the intranasal corticosteroids, there are some differences between each product. They're just basically patient preference. The Flonase or the Fluticasone has a little scent along with it. The Sensimins is a little lighter spray. 
there's not really a difference in cost between the generics, so just find one that works for you. The thing about these nasal sprays, though, with the intranasal corticosteroids, is that they can take a few weeks to get at their full effectiveness. Some people re get relief within a few hours, but it's more common that it can take up to two weeks to see the full benefit. So sometimes it's good to try to time it based around when you typically have bad allergies so you can get it in your system and ready to go. Another little pearl about these intranasal corticosteroids, it's when you use them, you wanna use what's called the alternate hand method to administer. I'm gonna grab my pen here. So when you use it in your left nostril, you wanna use your right hand and angle it towards your ear when you stick it in your nostril and vice versa, left hand for the right nostril. This will just ensure that we're not spraying the steroid directly onto the nasal septum and getting the medication where it's going to be the most effective. Uh, with these, the fluticasone and the other intranasal corticosteroids are covered under Medicare, um, typically as tier one or two, tier two copays. Otherwise, they can be purchased around over the counter for under $15 a month. They are not covered on commercial insurances. Another nasal spray that we can use is a saline nasal spray. Ocean saline and many stored varieties are out there. Um, these can be used in combination with the nasal corticosteroids. They can help rinse the allergens out of the nose. There's no limit on how often you can use them. Some people actually use the saline spray first and then follow it up with the intranasal corticosteroid. Um, they can find that to be really effective and helps with any dryness it may cause. We also have decongestant sprays like Afrin. These are for when you absolutely cannot get any relief and they are only for short-term use only. It's very important to not use them for more than three days because they can actually make your nasal congestion worse by a phenomenon called rebound congestion. All right, and at our, we also have eye drops that we can use to help treat our allergies. The first ones are the non-medicated eye drops, such as saline or artificial tears. The over-the-counter shelves are full of all sorts of different varieties on these different options. Um, they're great to use if you have persistent or red itchy eyes just to help wash, wash the allergens away. They're not very expensive. You can find certain store varieties for under $5, and it's really patient preference here. We also have available over-the-counter antihistamine and mast cell stabilizer eye drops, such as Patidae, Aloe, or Xanador. These work by stopping your eye from reacting to the substance that's irritating the eye. A few years ago, these were only available through prescriptions, but now they're over-the-counter and a great option to help treat your allergy eyes as well. In addition, we have eye decongestants such as NAFCON, OPCON, Visine, NAFCON A, which is a combination antihistamine and decongestant. Similar to the nasal decongestants, these are just short-term use only. Actually using them for longer than about three days can actually increase the eye redness due to that rebound effect again. All right, and something I wanna to add to before we get on to how to contact us is I skipped on the oral allergy medications um, talking about decongestants as well. Things like Sudafed or Sudafedrin. This is when you have nasal congestion that's just not responding. You do wanna use them only on a short-term basis because they can have side effects like increasing your blood pressure, or if you have a prostate problem, they can cause trouble urinating. So these are just an add-on just when you absolutely need it for your allergy symptoms. They do make products that come in combination like Claritin D, Allegra D, Zyrtec D. I don't recommend those as a pharmacist just because they have really high doses of decongestant. And I don't feel that you need to take the decongestant every day. The decongestant is something just to think of as added on when absolutely, absolutely needed. And if you do need that decongestant, you wanna make sure to get it from your pharmacist. They keep these behind the pharmacy counter. You do need to show your driver's license and fill out, sign some paperwork or sign an electronic form, electronic form to get them. Um, however, the decongestants that they sell without doing this aren't very effective. 
So if you do need the decongestant, the oral one, definitely get it from the pharmacist. And that's all I have on our allergies here. I just wanted to highlight our local pharmacist team here at Network Health. We are here to help. We are all based in Menasha or Milwaukee. Uh, you can call us at any time with questions about your medication, about your plan, or you can email our pharmacist email here. Uh, we give this out to our members, our agents, our providers. We're here to help. Wonderful. Sarah, thank you so much. What a great presentation full of, like you said, like tools for our allergy toolbox. And I really appreciate it because I actually personally struggle with allergies and so do my kids and my husband. And I, I have a question that I think maybe some other members um, and people might have too. When you talk about all those tools, um, can you use a combination of say an eye drop with an oral and maybe like a nasal? How does that work? Yes, absolutely, Kelly. Thanks for asking that. That is a great point. You can use all three. If you have runny nose, nasal congestion, watery eyes, and are just miserable, it is absolutely fine to use a generic Zyrtec, a Flonase spray, and some eye drops on top of that just to make you more comfortable. They all work on different areas, and there's no interactions between them. Wonderful, thank you. That helps me so much because I know that sometimes they are bad enough where I just need a little bit of everything and to know that there's they're not gonna fight against each other or harm me in any way is yep. really helpful. So I appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you again, Sarah, for joining us and for sharing all this valuable information. I would again like to thank all of you for joining us today, Sarah. Thanks for being here and sharing your time. If you have any questions or would like additional information about the information presented today, or like information about Network Health, please email or call me directly. My uh, email address and phone is listed on the screen. And again, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks again. Take care and have a wonderful spring and summer. Thank you. Bye.